Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Dr. Movie. And boy, have we got a good one here. Um, this is one I'm very late to the game to. This is my first time viewing Train to Busan uh, from 2016. It's a horror action flick. And uh, just got through watching it, I mean, literally like two minutes ago, and had to jump on here and, and share my thoughts with you. Wow. I mean, this is not going to be a surprise. Everything I've heard about this movie and all the reviews and the raves, uh, you know what? It it lives up to it. This could be one of the finest zombie flicks ever made. It is really, really well made. Uh... And we'll talk about a lot of the things that, that make this really stand out as we go along. But so far, just, just getting spoiler alert, I'm impressed, right? Um, 2016, it's got a 7.6 uh, 7 out of 10 on IMDb. And 94% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. So yeah, this thing's got a very, very high rating. Let's do a synopsis here. It says, a man and his estranged daughter and other passengers become trapped on a speeding train during a zombie outbreak in South Korea. Don't you hate when that happens? You know, you're, you're going along, you're, you're, you're planning your trips, and, and, you know, what else happens but, you know, a zombie outbreak. I just, you know, it really puts a, a, a damper on your day. <laughs> um, this is directed by Yan Sang-ho who's uh, gone on and done some other things recently. Uh, Peninsula comes to mind, right? There's supposedly a sequel to this that I need to, to check out as well. And um, let's see. Let's talk about our cast. You're not going to know a lot of these folks. you got Gong Yu in this, who's also in Squid Games, among some other things. Uh, Ma Dong Siak uh, was in The Eternals, I believe. And, uh, of course, Yun Sing Ho... Uh, is also playing in this movie as well, as far as some other characters. So, uh, can't really elabor elaborate a lot on the cast because, again, I haven't seen this movie before. And, uh, you know, it was on my list. It's on Tubi, by the way, if you want to check it out. There's two versions, right? You got a dubbed version that you can watch if you if it bothers you to read subtitles. Poor, poor y'all, you know, having to read. But, uh, I don't know. I like watching things in the original language just because I think you miss some of the, uh, what's the right word? Um, the impact of things being said versus somebody's idea of what's being said. So, uh, movie starts off, you kind of got a, a successful businessman. He's got a young daughter. It's her birthday. Which is always the story in these movies, right? Uh, very old boyish, you know, where he's trying to get a gift for his daughter. And uh, when he shows up home to give it to her, he, he got her a Wii, and she already had one. So now she's got two Wiis, which she acts like is a problem. But I'm like, yo, you got two Wiis. <laughs> Sounds like a good deal to me. And, uh... But uh, there's obviously a problem here, right? And, and she wants to go stay with her mom. So this whole movie bases around a estranged daughter and, and father and trying to get the daughter back to the mom's house. So they have to take a train to, guess where? Busan. That's right. Uh, it's, since, you know, uh, the, the title, you know, that's kind of what it's telling us. Um, this is cleverly done, right? Because, yeah, it's a zombie flick. What, is this, what does this movie have that other zombie flicks don't have? Well, it has a train. <laughs> so you got a different type of seclusion. You got, you know, different carts that you can cut off. That way they can't get to you through, you know, the doors and stuff. Um, 
I love that there's no real explanation of what's going on. We do get a shot at the beginning where a guy's, you know, uh, just obviously a farmer of some type, and he, he hits a deer while he's on the road. And when he passes through, he gets out and stops for a second and says, I'm going to go on. So he gets back in his car and takes off. Well, I'm glad he did because that deer just stands right back up, and it's obviously got this zombification, whatever the problem is here. And uh, it just rolls from there. Um, everything seems normal. They're trying to get on the train and make this trip to take the daughter to where, where she wants to go, to her mom's. And while they're in this town getting ready to get on, on, on board, you can tell something's going on in the city. So you don't really get an overview of what is happening. But obviously, you know, the, the dad says, there must be something going on. You know, yeah, you think? And uh, everybody's on the train. It's about to go. And one lady gets on who's been bit. And that's where all the trouble ensues, right? So, you know, the setups are pretty standard. But the way that the things are done is just shot in a different way. I mean, you can't help but look at this and not think of the original Dawn of the Dead. Because there's a lot of zombies on the other side of glass looking at you trying to get through. But what I do like about the way this is done is I don't know how many extras <laughs> they hired for this flick but there is a there is a lot and they're they're the fast moving zombies right got the got the rage and they turn really really quick it's not a long drawn out process for these creatures to change it happens really really quick and uh, you get the introduction of some other characters that you kind of get fond of there's this one kind of crazy looking homeless guy who they find on the train who's hiding in the bathroom and he's saying that they're all dead they're all dead so he's you know obviously he's already seen enough to scare the heebie-jeebies out of him and uh you've got uh a baseball team that's on here and uh they i guess they're traveling to a game there's a young lady that says that she's the cheerleader and she likes one of the guys that's on the team so you kind of get that kind of relationship going on uh it's very it's very much like demons as far as the setups of the couples because you got a uh, uh an expecting couple as well and uh, you know they're, the lady's gonna have a baby and they're traveling and this guy's kind of a uh kind of a beefed up dude and kind of snarky so you get some confrontation with these people. There's also your group of people. You, you've got to have that one guy, right, that you just hate. And all he's doing is he's looking out for himself, doesn't care about anybody else. And, you know, the beauty of these films is it, it, it shows you how people react in crisis, right? For the most part, you think people will react to helping one another, fighting this thing off. But it, it can become very, very easily a look out for yourself thing more than anything else, which is the nice twist about this movie because you got some redeemable characters on here, which is an interesting take, right? Because, uh, like I said, you've got the one guy that you hate, right, who... We'll talk about his situation a little bit later on, but obviously somebody who's uh, well off, you know, has money or whatever, riding first class. <clears throat> and um, but the whole relationship with the daughter while they're on the train, you you get this the whole sense of, you know, the daughter knows that the dad all he does is think about himself he doesn't do the things that are important to her so she has a recital where she's supposed to sing uh, sing a song and he doesn't show up and you know she tells him the story and he sees it on videotape the the grandmother videotaped it and the daughter couldn't finish the song in front of everybody and got embarrassed and she tells the dad that she learned that song only for him and that's the only person she could sing it for and he wasn't there so you you get this breakdown of of the family here and that quickly turns around right where he realizes the most important thing is, is taking care of his daughter through this whole situation 
So you got a lot of, like I said, redeemable characters here. You got, you know, like like I said, the big the big dumb kind of bully guy who has the expecting wife, and uh, he becomes a very key player in this as well, as far as defending and taking care of people. So, you know, I, I think about you, you guys know me. I try to stay out of the the political and the you know all the social justice stuff and all that. I I, I you know what I, I try to stay out of it. But again, these movies just make me realize that the things that we think are really problems are not problems at all. It's just we haven't had uh, a crisis that makes us realize what's really important in life. So, in a way, we're fortunate. We've been extremely blessed to not have fallouts, wars. I mean, I'm speaking from America, you know, we haven't had a real threat to the U.S. since probably World War II. So we're spoiled, right? I'll just go ahead and say it. And these things that we think that are injustices, are they injustices? Maybe, to a certain degree, sure. But we forget what's really important in life. And that's, you know, it's, it's a shame that it takes crisis for us to realize that. So I'm not trying to downplay anything. I'm just saying that we, we lose sight of what is really important in life instead of trying to identify who we are and all that mess, right? That stuff doesn't matter. What matters is when it, when it comes down to it, when the, when the rubber meets the road, you know, hopefully you look past all that stuff and your concern is to save each other, right? Regardless of what color you are or what side of the fence you're on or what political party you belong to, it, it, that stuff doesn't matter, you know? Uh, so anyways, that's the, that's the political statement of the day, right? And I don't like dabbling in that stuff because you know what? Everybody's got a right to be happy. And that's just kind of where I like to leave it. Um, but yeah, th this these kind of movies make me think about that stuff, about all these petty things that we think are such a big deal really are nothing when it comes to the grand scheme of survival. So, I don't know, stick that in your hat. Um, another thing I really like about this movie... And I'm sure there's some CGI stuff going on here. It's got to be. Uh, but the, the, the way that the zombies use themselves like stackers, right? And I, I like it because it's, it's this side of other movies that we, we've seen the CGI where the zombies climb all over each other and make this tower or whatever. <clears throat> Not pointing out any movies directly, but I think you can name, name a few yourselves. I like this one because it's a smaller scale, and it's a bit more believable. Uh, are they smart enough to use each other in this way? Don't think so. But what I do like about these zombies, I had a buddy that would always talk about his, his claim in life. If you remember from uh, Step Brothers, the dad saying, never lose your dinosaur, right? Well, I had a buddy that always talked about be a caribou. Just be a caribou. And what he meant by that was a caribou will stand on one mountain and just look at the other mountain and go, hey, I think I want to be over there. And they'll just jump. They don't give a crap. They just jump. And, you know, sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. And I think that was just kind of his way of saying, you know, live for today, take the jump, right? And I really like the way these zombies are just falling through things, falling out of helicopters. There's one scene that I absolutely love where these helicopters are flying over. Apparently, these are medical helicopters picking up people that are injured. Well, the people in the helicopters change. And when the helicopter's flying over, these bodies are just falling out of the plane on the ground from, I don't know, 50 feet in the air, maybe even higher. And they just get up and go to chasing. I mean, it's... It's quite impressive. Um, you get a scene at the end where uh, we've changed from one train to another for the getaway, and the zombies start chasing. It's just just the engine is what it is, and um, 
they one of them grabs the exterior of it and the rest of them start grabbing onto that zombie and they build basically a ramp for the zombies to get up on there and so you know as cool as it is you kind of go wait a minute these these things don't really have a thought process and it's pretty apparent because they're willing to fall out of an airplane or a helicopter crash on the ground and just i mean they're just machines that's what they are but they use themselves a lot there's a lot of scenes where a lot of the cgi stuff is happening i'm, I'm assuming cgi i would be even more impressed if it's not but pushing you know hundreds of people through glass windows to make them fall so you know to give enough pressure to break through and then use them as an off ramp to, to get up and start chasing these are some brilliant ideas so this movie really brings a lot of freshness to the zombie world i, I think we really got stale it's kind of like we felt like we'd seen it all uh this one's got enough action in it to kind of give you a different perspective on a lot of it. I don't want to spoil much more of it because there's a lot of story here. And uh, again, very well done. I really, really like this movie. Uh, and again, this is the first time viewing, but I'm going to go ahead and say right off the bat, I'm going to give this a five out of five. And this is a first time viewing, folks. That doesn't happen a lot. So, uh, if you're a fan of this movie, man, I, I totally get it. I, I kind of feel bad that I've waited this long to finally check it out. But uh, it's a brilliant film. Very well done. And like I said, people are probably going, ah! But it could be one of the top contenders of one of the greatest zombie movies ever made. It is that well done. So uh, that's my opinion of Train to Busan plenty of action, plenty of train crashes, plenty of bodies being thrown everywhere, uh, plenty of people getting killed, people changing, uh, lots of twists and turns, very well made film, you need to check it out. Alright folks, that's it for this one, we will check ch 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 